Let's talk about the experience of doing mathematics and some of the implications of mathematical relationships. Here's the sequence of odd numbers. Ask yourself what number comes next in the sequence, and then the number after that. When you look at a pattern of numbers and try to extend it, you're doing mathematics. And this particular process, extending a pattern of numbers, is called inductive reasoning. Next, we have the sequence of squares. Here are the first three numbers. Ask yourself what number comes next, then the next number after that, and so on. Again, when we extend this sequence, we're doing mathematics. It's a pleasant experience, and it's different from our normal state of consciousness. We don't notice time going by, and we don't notice ourselves being separate from our surroundings. It's only when we come out of it and make judgments about our progress that we label the experience as good or bad. But that's us, not mathematics. Now, there's a relationship between the sequence of odd numbers and the sequence of squares that I really like. To find the relationship, ask yourself, how can I build the sequence of squares from the sequence of odd numbers? If you want to try to find that relationship yourself, pause the video now. Okay, here's the relationship. The first odd number and the first square are both 1. If I add the first two odd numbers, 1 plus 3, I get 4, the second square. If I add the first three odd numbers, 1 plus 3 plus 5, I get 9, the third square. Add the first four odd numbers, and you get the fourth square, so on and so forth. I don't even need to add the first five odd numbers to know that the result will be 25. Look at what a nice relationship this is. Add the first two odds, get the second square. Add the first three odds, get the third square. Add the first four odds, get the fourth square. I see relationships like this, and I say to myself, you know what, everything's okay. Things are just connected, and it feels good when I see it. Now, there are some things to notice about this relationship and how we communicate about it. First of all, this is not the number five. Neither is this, and neither is this. No one has ever seen the number five, and no one ever will see the number five. It doesn't exist as an object or a thing. It's an idea or a concept. This is ink on a piece of paper, but it's not the number five. So these numbers and sequences and relationships that we're working with don't actually exist as objects or things. They're ideas or concepts that exist within us, and we communicate about them with written symbols. Here's what one famous mathematician had to say about this. Mathematics is a game played according to certain simple rules with meaningless marks on paper. Now, notice this about communicating back and forth about this relationship. It transfers back and forth between us perfectly. There's no ambiguity to it. I know what you are thinking and saying, and you know what I am thinking or saying. Ask yourself how this compares with other things we communicate about. For instance, the taste of food, sound, emotions. Somebody told me that a kale salad tasted really good. I tasted it. It didn't taste good to me. If someone says to me, I'm feeling a little down today, I really have no idea what that actually means. Most of my everyday communications are like that, except in mathematics. I want to leave you with another sequence to extend. It's called the Fibonacci sequence after the Italian mathematician known as Fibonacci. Notice the state of mind you're in as you look for the pattern and try to extend it. We will start the next video with the Fibonacci sequence. See you then.